Greetings, pen pals. Another month has come and gone. We're in 2021. Let's get right to it. This is my monthly video of all the pens that I used each day for work in 2021. That's the only thing they have in common with each other. We're going to go through them in the order in which I use them. So I had a pretty full month of January, so I got quite a few pens to talk about today. So um, let's get uh, right to it. Uh, first up, we have a Conklin Mark Twain. This is a really, really nice pen from Conklin. This is a, um, a, 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 a tribute slash homage to vintage Conklin Crescent Filler pens. It is a Crescent Filler, so I mean it's a modern pen with a sack. Very, very, very unusual. Really cool filling mechanism. I did a full video going uh, through this. It's called the Mark Twain because Mark Twain actually appeared in Conklin print ads during his lifetime, which is really an actual interesting uh, uh, connection. So, uh, as we said, so this is a Conklin Mark Twain. And this pen has a number six steel nib in fine and this ink is a uh, J Herban Le De Te Conklin Mark Twain really really nice pen big nib writes well nibs got that crescent shape breather hole which I really really like and it's got a cool filling mechanism so this is a cool pen to check out. Really nice pen. Made to look like an old black chased hard rubber pen, but this is uh, this pen is acrylic. All right, next up is um, a pen from one of probably my favorite pen manufacturer. Make no secret about the fact that I'm a big Pilot fan, and this is maybe, maybe some people say their flagship pen. Hard to say. Well, we'll see. Um, at any rate, um, this is a Pilot custom 823. This is a vac filler with a great, great, really well working vacuum uh, filling mechanism. This has a, um, what Pilot calls a number 15 nib, which is roughly a number, big number six nib, like a number six, but a little bigger, I think, uh, in 14 carat. And this is in broad. Uh, this has just beautiful flow, really nice, wet, juicy nib. And um, this pen actually came with a bottle of ink. Uh, and this ink that it came with is Pilot Blue. Great pen, Pilot Custom, 823. Love this pen. All right, next up is a pen from early in 2020. A lot of controversy around this pen featured a really b strange magnetic filling mechanism is a limited edition pen for the year of the rat this is a pen bbs 492 did a full video on this there's been a lot of discussion online many people reviewed this pen they came out with a pen called the 487 which has the f which is sort of a production version not a limited edition that has the same uh, type of filling mechanism the filling mechanism is a gimmick, uh, but it's a cool gimmick, but nevertheless, it's a gimmick. Uh, but in any case, this, this, this pen is a pen BBS 492, and this has a number six steel nib in medium. And uh, this ink is also from Pen BBS. It is Pen BBS Petra. I really like this ink. I'm a huge fan of this Pen BBS Petra uh, ink. I, I need to use it more often. I like this ink. Pen BBS 492. Cool pen has this magnetic filling mechanism. I can't demonstrate it here, but basically, uh, what happens is uh, it has magnet at the end of the piston, uh, magnet in the cap. You drag the piston up and down. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I've mostly had success with both this and the 487. Other reviewers online have had less luck than I have with this. But stylistically, this is really a really nice looking pen. They did a beautiful job with this. Uh, the filling mechanism is a little twitchy, to say the least. 
Another pen BBS pen up next. This is a much better pen. This is a 355. This was pen BBS's answer to say the Con kind of bulk filler. Again, cool filling mechanism as one would expect from pen BBS. We expect nothing less from them. So um, really, really nice, uh, cool filling mechanism. So this is a uh, pen BBS 355. And this also has a number six steel nib in medium. This ink is maybe my favorite green ink. I can't pronounce the name of it. It's from Ackerman. And uh, the name is in Dutch, so I can't pronounce it, but Ackerman does give all their inks numbers, and this is Ackerman number 28. So this is a really might be my favorite green. Um, really, really nice ink. Great pen, pen BBS 355. I have this in, in a few colors now. Really, really like it. This, of course, is the fully transparent demonstrator version. Uh, this is the first one of the 355s that I got. Really, really nice pen. Again, I have a full extensive video on this where I go through all the details and idiosyncrasies of the filling mechanism. So you can check that out. All right, next pen is a pen from India, one of my favorite pen manufacturers, handmade pen, all, all ebonite, eyedropper filled pen. This is a Ranga Model 3. This is a matte finish, black ebonite, just great pen, beautiful, beautiful pen. I love this pen. Um, and um, um, I've been really, really happy with it. One thing I have done with this pen since I've had it, for whatever reason, I keep changing the nibs and changing the inks in this pen. And but I think I've kind of settled on an ink pen nib combination that I like because this has been sitting this way for quite a while. So this is a Ranga Model 3. And this has a number six steel can write, which is an Indian nib company. Nib in medium. And uh, this ink is a very, very popular ink. Everybody knows this one. This is Diamine Ancient Copper. If you don't have this ink, you need to get it. This is a must have ink in my opinion. Great ink, Diamine Ancient Copper. All right, next up is an eyedropper filled pen from Moon Man. This is a Moon Man S5. The only thing I really don't like about this pen, it has this little faux gemstone here to act as a roll stop. Uh, not crazy about the way that looks, but it's a really nice pen. This pen came with three different nibs. The one I have in it is an oblique broad nib. Uh, and this is a small number five size nib. Really cool acrylic section. Nice, nice pen. Eyedropper only pen from uh, Moon Man. So this is a Moon Man model S5. And this has a number five steel oblique broad nib. And this ink is a limited edition ink, was part of a set commemorating the Apollo 11 moon landing. And this is a really nice blue black ink. And this is from Colorverse, Apollo 11. Really nice, uh, really nice ink. I'm gonna do a blue black ink review because I've got quite a few of them and that will definitely feature prominently in that. All right, next up is a pen uh, that I was not crazy uh, about the nib. Matter of fact, I detested the nib when I got it. So this is a, a Conklin Endure Abalone, all natural abalone shell, really a beautiful, beautifully made pen. Really, really nice pen. However, it originally came with a Conklin Omniflex nib, which is just garbage. Um, I replaced the nib and I've been really, really happy with it ever since. So really nice uh, pen. Now it's got a really nice nib, great. Do not get that Conklin Omniflex nib, it just is no good. All right, this is a Conklin Endura Abalone. And this has a, now has a number six, 1.1 millimeter stub nib from Anderson Pens.
And this ink is from Diamine. This ink is Diamine Purple Rain. And uh, this, this new stub nib in here works great. Does exactly what you would want it to do from a line variation perspective, etc. Really, really nice. Conklin Endura abalone beautiful beautiful pen now has an nib in it that is worthy of the pen all right next up is a moon man pen that is made to look like a mont blanc little prince pen this is the p135 i did a full video on this my friend doug rathbun did a really nice video on this as well really really nice pen um uh, to, uh check out my full video mine doug's as well Great, great pen. Um, writes really well. Has a number five mini Fude nib. Really, really beautiful pen. Just gorgeous artwork. This is deeply, deeply engraved here. Really, really a nice, nice pen. So what we're writing with here is a Moon Man P135. And this has a number five mini Fude nib and uh, this ink is papier plume sepia really really nice pen very happy with this one this one definitely exceeded my expectations by quite a bit moon man p135 next up is another moon man that's also made to look like a pen from Mont Blanc. This is the Moon Man uh, M1000. Very, very heavy pen. Wood, steel, all the place. Big, big pen. Um, made to look like a Mont Blanc pen, which m is made to evoke the style of the handles of f knives from a fine French knife maker that Mont Blanc has partnered with. So it's sort of a copy of an homage of a partnership. It's complicated. I have a video I did on this pen. Doug Rathbun has a video he did on this pen, and we did a collaboration discussion on this pen. So this pen's been talked about to death, basically. So I'm not gonna say too much more about it here, but uh, I liked it. Doug, not quite so much, but take a look at it. Um, it is does pose some challenges. It's big, it's heavy, it's got a smooth metal section. It does have a Bach nib, uh, which, which is nice. Um, 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 does not post. Um, I like it. But, uh, you know, it's not, not for everybody, clearly. So this is a Moon Man M1000. And this has a number six Bach nib, steel nib, in fine, a uh, little broad for a fine, but again, it's a German nib. Um, and um, and this ink is Birmingham soft pretzel. Moon Man M1000. Nice pen. I like it. All right, next up is a pen that I replaced the section on. This is a Wingsung 601A with the tubular steel nib. This is a... Um, like a vacuumatic fill style filler with, with a pump. This is what they call the flighter version. It's the all steel version, but it had a black plastic section. For a few bucks on eBay, they're selling a replacement section, so you can turn it into essentially an all steel flighter pen. I just think it looks great. I love the way this looks and goes right into the tubular steel nib. I just like that look. I like the tubular steel nibs in general. I think they write pretty well. Um, uh, nice, nice pen. Uh, now it's sort of all steel. I think it kind of looks really right with the with the with the metal section. I did a video on showing the section replacement, so you can check that out if you are interested in that. So this is a Wingsung six o one A, and this has a tubular steel nib in fine it's very it's quite fine actually bordering on extra fine really and this ink is kwz whoop, kwz as your number five uh, 
nice pen. I really like the I really like the way that this transformation came out. Really nice. It's got some heft to it too. Nice pen. Not much to say about this next one. Everyone knows this, a Mont Blanc 149, um, Mont Blanc's flagship, uh, big pen, um, just, a, just a great pen. Really, really nice pen. This particular one is not a new one. This is from the 1970s. So this has a 14 carat nib with an ebonite feed. If you were to walk into a Mont Blanc store and buy a brand new one of these, you would get an 18 carat nib with a plastic feed. Also, this particular ebonite feed was made during a period where they created what's called a split ebonite feed. You can see that little line in the feed. That's a little bit of a hinge. So the theory is that the, the feed actually flexes a little bit as the pen writes. Um, that's the theory at least, uh, at least anyway. But anyway, this is um, a uh, Mont Blanc 149. 149, and this has a 14 carat nib in fine. And um, this ink is Mont Blanc, Royal Blue. Mont Blanc, 149. Not a lot to say about that. Very, very, you can say, if you could say a fountain pen is famous, this would be it. All right, next one is a pen that is also kind of famous too, but more so among the fountain pen community exclusively, but uh, this is my Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age Oversize. Long, probably the longest name I have for pen. It's got the sort of hook safe locking mechanism, which is pretty much unique to Visconti. This is also made, this, the material on the bow and the cap is a, uh, a resin that is made with lava from Mount Etna in Italy. It it's got all the, the cool stuff. It's got the Visconti Ponte Vecchio style spring clip. It's got all this nice enamel work. Really, really nice. It is what they call a power filler, which is Visconti's sort of vac filler. Uh, one thing it doesn't have is a shutoff valve. So it's a vac filler, but it's straight through. There isn't a shutoff valve uh, at the top. Um, this one is a slightly older one. The newer ones have 23 karat gold nibs. This has the uh, 20, the newer ones have uh, 18 karat gold nibs. This has a 23 karat palladium nib. So this is a, like I said, a long name. So this is a Visconti. Homo sapiens. Bronze age. Oversize. Um, and this has a 23, 23 carat palladium. Nib in fine. And this is sort of a number six size nib. Um, and this ink is simply Waterman. Absolute brown. Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age Oversize. This one's kind of a little bit of a collector's item now. I mean, I know they made an awful lot of them, but they don't make them with the palladium nibs anymore. They switch to gold as their precious metal of choice. All right, next up is a pen that I really, really like but I didn't have for most of 2019. This was in the shop. This is a Aurora 88. Um, I broke the piston uh, turning knob by dropping it in the summer of 2019, had to send it back to Italy. It was pretty much the whole second half of 2019 um, was in the shop in Italy. I got it back around November or December, late November, I think of 2019. So didn't have this for a good chunk of 2019, but it is back home where it belongs and I really like it. This is a Aurora 88. This has a sterling silver cap, by the way. This is really, really nice. Um, and this has a four, 14 carat nib in medium. And uh, this ink is Aurora Black. This is sort of like a number six-ish size uh, nib, 
but uh, it's got re the dimensions are really very distinctive to a roar. It's got these really long tines, um, which which um, can give you a bit of bounce and flex, etc. Um, it's a this is a pretty wet wet pen, uh, as you can see, and it's a it's a piston filler. And it's got a really nice. Um, uh, window, uh, ink window, and it's got an ebonite feet. Got a lot going for it. Really like this pen. Aurora 88. All right, next up is um, a pretty famous pen that I think all of you would know. This is a Pilot Falcon. Not a lot to say about that. This is a pretty famous uh, pen. It's got this very distinctive Falcon sh uh, style nib um, from Pilot. So they make a metal and a resin one. This is the resin one. So we have a Pilot. Falcon, and this has a uh, 14 carat nib, and this is in what they call SF for soft fine. So the nib does have a bit of a bounce to it. You can get a bit of line variation there. Don't really try flexing it in the classic sense because it's not a flex nib. Um, and this uh, ink is a Roshizuku. U Yake. Pilot Falcon, very, very well known and popular pen. All right, next up is a Pilot Custom Arushi in Vermilion. Now I know what you're going to say. Wait a minute, he's got one of those? Why haven't I seen this before? The reason is this is a fairly new acquisition and I haven't shot a review on it yet. Um, yeah, but trust me, I will. Um, I have to buy a new thesaurus because uh, when it comes to reviewing this pen, I have literally run out of uh, adjectives. So um, when I get the new thesaurus in and come up with some new adjectives, I will definitely shoot a full detailed review video on this pen. Trust me, it will be coming. But this is a Pilot Custom Arushi um, in Vermilion. And it's got this gigantic, and I do mean gigantic, number 30 size uh, pilot nib in 18 karat gold. And this one is a medium. So what we're writing with here is a pilot custom Arushi Vermilion. And this um, has a number 30. Keep in mind, Pilot has their own nib sizing system in 18 karat gold. And this is in medium. And uh, this ink is a Roshizuku. Oops. Momiji. Pilot Custom Arushi in Vermilion. Trust me, a video will be forthcoming on this, like I said, when I get some new adjectives. All right. Next up is a pen I just did a nib replacement video on. This is the Pen BBS 456. I built a new nib unit out of this um, uh, Fulin nib from Bobby Custom Nibs that has this huge, gigantic ball of tipping material on it um, and I did some nib smoothing and, and etc. So I have a detailed video where I go through all the steps involved in doing that. And this is a, a vac filler 456 from, um, from uh, Pen BBS. And this is what they call the Brume finish. Very, very nice pen. The pen, the, the blue that you're seeing here is from the ink, by the way, that's not the, um, that's the pen is an all white frosted uh, pen. Um, so like we said, we have here, a, um, a pen BBS 456 and this has a number six Bobby custom nib and this nib is from Fulin and um, I'm going to call this extra, extra broad, because I think that's pretty, pretty
pretty accurate. And this ink is a very light colored ink, so you need a very, very big wet nib for this ink at a minimum. Uh, and this ink is Colorverse Clear Cyan. There you go. Pen BBS 456 with a do-it-yourself nib swap. Very, very nice. All right, next up is a, is a pen that I really, really like. I have several of these in a bunch of different nib sizes. This is a Diplomat Arrow with a broad nib. Really, really nice. Um, nice pen. So we've got Diplomat Arrow. And this has a number six steel nib in broad. And this ink is Robert Oster. Orange zest. There we go. Very nice. Diplomat arrow, aluminum pen. Got some heft to it, really nicely made. All right, next up was one of the most eagerly awaited ten pens of 2020. They kept pushing the release date back and back and back. This is a um, capless retractable nib from Platinum called the Curidos. This is, in my opinion, very over-engineered, a little expensive for what it is, and I think they made some questionable design choices. I do think it's a cool pen. I mean, I guess it could be an alternative to a Pilot Vanishing Point if you wanted it to be, but uh, I think they really are are quite different other than the fact that they're obviously capless retractable pens. Um, there is some cool stuff to it. The throw on the push button, take a look at that, is just insane. It's like two inches. I mean, it's nuts. Um, but it is a capless retractable. It's got that little trap door there and this cool little mechanism, etc. So it's got a couple little things going for it. They keep advertising like crazy and promoting how great a job it does at keeping the nib dry. I think it's about average doesn't do as good a job as that Platinum Preppy does, for example. So I don't know what I don't know what they're thinking about that. But anyway, there you go. So here we have a Platinum Kiridas. And this has a, a steel nib in medium. And this ink is Deatramentus. Silver gray. There we go. Platinum Kyridas. All right, last up is a really, really nice pen from uh, Pelican. This is the M805 Ocean Swirl. Beautiful, beautiful pen. The thing that this has got going for it is just that material is just stunning. I, I can't, it doesn't, the photographs don't even really do it justice. It is absolutely a stunning, stunning pen. Um, so here we go. We have a Pelican M805 Ocean Swirl. And this ink is uh, Pelican. Oh, I'm sorry. This has an 18 karat nib in fine. Nice thing about Pelican, you can unscrew and swap out the nib units. Everything comes out as a unit, which is really nice. And the nibs are really pretty. Really, really beautiful nibs. Uh, and uh, this ink is from Pelican as well. It's Pelican Turquoise. There we go. Pelican M805 Ocean Swirl. So I think that will just about do it for this week. But before I let you folks go, I would implore you, if you don't already, to please like, comment, share, and subscribe. All those things would be very, very much appreciated. And as always, until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.